Welcome to the fourth press conference of the BERT Monitoring Committee. We are presenting the report for the performance of the BERT program up to September 30th, 2019. I want to welcome all members of the press here this morning. We have members from um, all of the major publications in Barbados. That's, I, it's, and, um, we believe that we are fairly well covered at this time. First of all, I want to offer an apology for a few members on our committee. Uh, Senator Tony Moore has this morning had a, to deal with an emergency matter. She is unable to attend. Mr. Kenny McDowell has also ex uh, offered an apology, and so has Mr. Edwin O'Neill, representing C2SAP. So unfortunately today, we only have members of the private sector here. Uh, on my right is Mr. Greg McConney from the BIBA, International Business, member of the private sector. Mr. Robert De Silva representing the Creditors Group of Barbados. And we are also offering an excuse for Ms. Donna Wellington who had a, a meeting this morning and she is unable to attend, offering an excuse as well. How we are gonna do it today, we're gonna offer a summary of where we are in the BERT program, the IMF BERT program and we allow the members of the press then to ask questions of the committee, the three members here present today. So that, that is the process of the work. As many of you already know, the BERT Monitoring Committee was formed in December 2018 when we signed the MOU with the government of Barbados. We have the ability to interview, question members of the government, members of the central bank, or any other technical persons associated with the government and the SOEs of Barbados, state-owned enterprises, in order to gather information in support of the reports that we do to the members of the public. So without further ado, I'm gonna go into some of the activities of the, of the basically the program that the Bird Monitoring Committee has been monitoring. Let me, let me open by saying that the government has met all of its targets at September 30th. And we are going to some more details, but this is basically the summary table that you, you see here. The fiscal targets, we know that the, one of the key drivers of the program is a 6% primary surplus at the fiscal year 2019-2020. The table can show, shows that we are well in excess of the primary target. The debt errors, the external debt, when this was done at September 30th, there was no settlement of the external debt situation. So these are not being accounted for in the September 30th uh, monitoring report. The transfers and grants to the public institutions, there are a limited number of public institutions that are being monitored. I think it is 30, 33 public institutions that are being monitored. And these are well within the limits set by the program, the BERT program. On the, on the public debt, we had a target of 12,698 set by the government, and they have been able to achieve this at September, 12, 12 billion, sorry, 426 million. So they're well within the target laid down in the program as well. So those are all the fiscal targets, and, and the government has been able to meet them. On the monetary side, the net domestic assets of the central bank, there are limits within, within that pro, in the program. So the government had 1.8 billion, 893 billion versus a target of just over 2 billion. So they're within that, uh, those targets set as well. And on the international reserves, I'm happy to say that we are, based on the September report, the government is at $971 million versus a target of $900 million expected at September 30th, 2019. That is only net international reserves. There are also some, some other targets that were set in the program, and we, we monitored these as part of our role on the monitoring committee, the indicative targets under the EFF. There is a ceiling on central government domestic arrears, and that has been set and agreed the amount that the target was at September was 265 million, and the government was at 180 million based on the reports received. On the social spending side, they had a target, minimum target, that is a minimum level of spending that the government is expected to, to have, and there, there was a level of 22 million 
and they expended over 23 million at September. So they've met that target as well. And then you have the public institution arrears. Those are the SOEs that we're talking about. And those are 120 million now versus a target of 254. As you know, the government has advised that they've been bringing down these arrears on a quarterly basis. In addition to the fiscal and, and primary targets and the, and the monetary targets, there are also a couple other structural benchmarks that were laid out for the September period, up in, and period ending 30th of September. One of these was the Governor General needed to proclaim the Financial Management Act. As you know, that act was, was laid in the House and passed in the House, but it needed to be proclaimed by the Governor General. That has happened in the last quarter. And the second one was the government was to conduct a comprehensive review of all tariffs and fees charged by the SOEs. That review has been completed. I know we await the outcome of what, what will happen with the, any new fees or charges that will come about. But the work has been completed by the government at this time. So they have met every target as agreed with the IMF and agreed on the DEVERT program. What I want to talk a bit now is about some of the, the other things I think we need to be aware of because this is just the end of the first year. We have a, still have a long way to go in Barbados. Uh, a lot of targets need to be met over, over the next four years. They've made a, the government has made a very strong start in 2019-20 so far. The, as I said, the, the primary balance has been met, the targets have been met. A lot of this has been done mainly by expenditure control. Uh, controlling the expenses and wastes in, that has uh, transferred in the past. The SOEs, those 33 monitored SOEs, appear to be under control. The transfers to the public institutions, which you have seen in the central bank report, that uh, there's a, the line transfers to the public institutions. Those 33 monitored SOEs are, are well under control at this time. There are, however, some other SOEs that are not in this 33 in the program. Although we don't report on those 33, there are some cases where the expenditure levels on those are above targets. And those need to be brought back in line in order for us to have an overall expense target um, achieved. We would expect that certain, these, some of these could be timing issues um, because everything is done on a cash basis, but we would expect that these need to be addressed and brought back in line over the next six months in the, in the program, in the next six months of our fiscal year. The only way that some of these expenditures can be really brought under control is truly transforming the way business is done in government. And we must transform all these SOEs, whether it's the small SOEs or the large SOEs. We know work has started in some of them. We know work has started in customs. Um, they've been looking at BRA. We know the work has looked at the transport board. But there are a number of other areas that need to be addressed in order for us to ensure that government meets these targets in the, on the expenditure side, while providing the level of service that Barbadians expect as citizens and residents of Barbados. So these are things that we want to see truly transform. We are very happy that government has been able to settle the debt with the external creditors. Uh, the debt exchange, not sell the debt, we wish they'd sell the debt, but there's the sell the debt exchange with the external creditors. That's a very positive sign for Barbados. Uh, we believe it will increase investor confidence. It will certainly in, in, improve the confidence level of all people doing business in Barbados, knowing that no, we no longer have this new surround net. We have come to an agreement based on what government has advised, and we expect that things will be settled going forward. We now need to assess the impact of that debt settlement over the future years. We have been assured by government that the net reserves target will still be achievable based on the settlement that they've agreed with these creditors. And I have no doubt that that is a key point in any negotiations that the government had with the creditors. So these are things that we will now start to see come about and we will now start to see the impact of these in the next six months to a year going forward. You may recall recently the IDB announced a $40 million loan for the digitalization and transformation in some of these SOEs. We, we really look forward to that coming about. Um, as I said earlier, those are key drivers of, of efficiency improvements in, in, the, in the government services sector. 
So we want to see this, this $40 million applied to the, to the areas that are really needed, and uh, cer certainly service improvements are brought about across the state-owned enterprises. One of the concerns that the committee has is, and I, I know the government is aware of it, we have had discussions already, the low level of capital expenditure in Barbados from, on the government side. Government had a target for CapEx of around $87 million at September, and they achieved, they spent about $36 million at September. So there's quite a gap between what was spent and what was budgeted. Capital expenditure in the right direction, I may add, will stimulate the economy. It will stimulate employment and will stimulate the economy in, in general. Um, so we need, to see, we need to see the government improve on, on this expenditure and, and applying the resources in the right areas. We know we have serious infrastructural problems across Barbados, whether it is sanitation. We have the concerns around the sewage, which we know they will be dealing with, they are dealing with. We have water resource issues. We have road conditions that are deplorable in some areas. So we have to see some of these capital um, projects being started. And I can assure you that once those are started, it will stimulate some employment and some growth in the economy in general. On the other hand, in unemployment, as we know, especially at this time of the year, is a, is a very worrying item. And we know that there's been a slight increase on the unemployment stats. And we're hopeful that as the season progresses for the tourist season, we'll see some lowering of that. But that general employment will improve with, with new projects coming on stream, especially in the, in the government area as well. Investor and public confidence will improve once this stimulation gets going. In the area of the private sector, we must see some of these projects in the private sector coming about. We know that there have been delays for whatever reason, one reason or the other. Um, some of them are, are a little slower than we would like, but there are a number of projects that have been placed in the press and placed on the table for many investors in Barbados. And we want to see these projects come to fruition. We would expect government to have full resources applied to ensure fast tracking of many of these projects. The only way we can see the growth in this economy as I said in the past, growth in this economy is going to come through increased tourism or increased new investment in the economy. We must attract this new investment in the economy to stimulate new revenue streams. You cannot achieve further taxation revenue from the same sources all the time. It is just not doable. It will not get us out of the hole. So we, the private sector and the public sector, have to work together to ensure that these investment projects come to fruition as quickly as possible. I mentioned already the GOB CAPEX issue. We believe that in 2020, if we look forward from here, this quarter here and next quarter, the new projects would improve the unemployment side of the equation, whether it's government or private sector. The external debt settlement will stimulate investors' confidence, locally and externally. The improvement in efficiency and ease of doing business we know has started in some areas. Unfortunately for us, we still have a number of areas that need a significant improvement in the way of doing business. We still talk about Kaipo, about BRA, the Port and Customs still have issues, BWA, Sanitation Services Authority, BAMC, National Housing, all of these need f urgent attention and focused attention if we are truly going to see transformation. All of these entities must be transformed in the very near future. It's not going to happen overnight, but transformation must start. And that's why we're happy to hear that the, the digitalization aspect will start. Transformation and change management is on the most difficult part of this whole program. But we have to work together as the public and private sector and the labor to, to try and ensure that these things come about for the good of Barbados. One area that we believe the sanitation, I know, um, with the tourist season coming up, 
and with all the complaints Barbadians have made, we have to get the garbage off of our streets. We cannot expect people to be coming here to have a good time and see the state of our garbage around Barbados. It, it, it's a bad message to send to, gen to the visiting population and it creates a sense of, of disappointment and embarrassment for every Barbadian in society. That has got to be addressed with utmost haste. We also want to ensure that the small business people, the large business people, and the private Barbadians, the public in general, we get all of our tax refunds on a timely basis as part of the program as entailed. So we would expect all the personal income tax refunds that were due on October 31st to be made around this time, if not already made. And we would expect that all the VAT refunds that are, are, are due to the business sector be made to the business sector. These, this cash flow stimulus will help in stimulating other, other projects and other growth in the economy from the smallest level to the highest level. So it's, that's why it's important that we get this stimulation, this, this funding back in the economy. I think that, that brings me really to the end of the summary of the report. As I said, we have a detailed report you can look at with all the, the stats and so on. I don't want to bore you with the other stats, but a lot of the information is, is available in the economic report, the quarterly report from the central bank. And a lot of it um, is there for Barbadians to read. And I, I encourage all Barbadians to have a look at these reports. They're important uh, reports that they need to monitor and need to, to stay on top of as, as things go forward. So I don't have anything else further to offer here at this time as part of the official presentation. Uh, so now we will open to the press to take questions from the press. And as, as much as we can answer, we will try to do so. So thank you. Yes, Ian. Um, Mr. Clark, um, the, you Sorry. mentioned the date. Um, Just state who you are and who you represent. Good morning, Ian Bourne, BaytonReporter.com and CETA Radio 90.1 FM. Uh, Mr. Clark, uh, you mentioned digitization. Now, uh, before I ask directly, Revenue Authority, um, through their portal Easy Pay, mm -hmm. they've just enabled M Money to come on board as a means of settling um, land tax and other matters. Right. Yet, at the same time, M Money appears to have uh, not as much of an alliance as they would like with, with the banking sector. I was wondering, um, as part of the monitoring committee and also as private sector agency, mm -hmm. what is being done to, to smooth the, the troubled waters between M money and the banking sector so as to generate further digitization that you spoke of? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Ms. Wellington, who represents the banking sector, isn't here, but we have a very good person here, Mr. De Silva, who is also a member of the banking sector. So maybe, Robert, you, I don't know if you can assist in that regard. Hopefully, if I, if I speak loudly, everyone can hear the, the microphones will pick it up. Um, yes. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Okay, so I, I, um, I, made, I made this a point to you a little bit in my answer in, in terms of dealing with specific entities. I, I know your question is fairly specific, but I, I think I would prefer to step back a bit um, in terms of uh, digitization and the benefits to be had. Um, certainly commercial banks recognize that they aren't the only game in town and in fact as, as part of the larger um, you know the, 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 the entire thrust towards digitization it really has to be all hands on deck. So right away one would recognize that there are multiple solutions that need to be available. One of the, the tenants of, of the financial system is having an inclusive financial system. So I certainly would say that there's room for all players to bring their specific capabilities. Um, certainly the commercial banking sector is very involved in the conversations with um, facilitation of tax payments 
both ways, by the way, both paying taxes and facilitating refund process and so on digitally. So um, that's the best I can offer on it. That I, I think there's room for, for many players in it. It's not the domain of, of commercial banks alone. Good morning, Emmanuel Joseph Barbados today. We've just had a kind of a traumatic experience this week with the light and power and the water. I'm just asking what impact you think that would have on the BERT program, filtering through in terms of productivity and loss of um, time and the dislocation generally in, in the country. Could you answer that? Well, I, I would say there's no doubt that it has a negative impact on productivity and a session on the economy. There's no doubt about that. It is hard to measure how much at this stage, Emmanuel. Um, but I think what it has shown us is that, I mean, overall, I think the BERT program targets, you should still be able to meet them. I don't think that will stop us from meeting the targets. That will not be a reason to stop us. However, if it continues, that's a different matter. That's why it is important that this, this situation be remedied immediately, and I think Prime Minister and the Light and Power and all involved have done a, a great job to try and reassure Barbadians and general public investors and everybody that they can, they have it under control, and we can be reassured that things will get better. But it has shown us, I think, in general in Barbados that we are unprepared. We are unprepared in the public sector, we are unprepared in the private sector, and we are unprepared in our homes how to deal with a situation like this. And it, it has woken up a lot of people in Barbados in how we need to be better prepared as, a, as citizens, as residents, and businesses and, and, the, and the public services. We must be better prepared to handle emergencies and to handle business continuity. And I, I hope that in the next few months, before the next um, hurricane season comes back, we, we certainly find ourselves every possible way to ensure that we remedy what we went through this week on the power and water, but we remedy the situation that we manage the emergency resources much better going forward. I think what was done was was done well to fix the problem, but that is not that's not a long term solution for us. We must we must be able to handle things much better ourselves in case of such eventualities, hurricanes or whatever disaster we may get. Good morning, Sean. Camerabats from the Nation. Um, you, you did mention some concern about some of the state-owned state enterprises outside of the 33 in terms of spending. Can you tell, uh, identify for us what those agencies are and in terms of the amount of spending you, of, of what you're concerned about? Sure. Sure. Um, the, a lot of the major um, state-owned enterprises are covered within the 23. Uh, so we're talking about a lot of the smaller uh, agencies. I don't have to hand the, the specifics of it, but when you look at the BERT um, monitored SOEs, they were $26 million below the target for their expenditure. But when you look at SOEs in total, they were $17 million over uh, the government's internal target for spending on SOE transfers. Um, so that implies that there's in excess of $40 million spent by the smaller SOEs uh, over and above what the government had originally targeted. We have asked for some information on details about where the, specifically those excess expenditures have been and we we're waiting uh, feedback on that but that's obviously a big area of concern where you have that level of, of excess uh, expenditure uh, on enterprises that should be relatively small and uh, not part of the, the formal monitoring process of the IMF. But you, you don't have 
any, you don't have any examples of the, in terms of no, identifying we, the agencies? We are awaiting, these are a lot of smaller agencies, but we are awaiting information on which ones are over. Okay. So we can, we can address that issue. We don't have that data yet, we are still awaiting that. So. Um, you seem to get the impression you're concerned about the pace of the structural reforms. Um, you mentioned, like, for instance, what is taking place at the court and Kaipo, et cetera. Can you pinpoint some more of those areas of, about which you're concerned? Yeah. I, that, there's no doubt that, as I said before, we've gone through the first year of the program. Um, they had to restructure. The government had to restructure the, the, the government, control the expenditure, control the wastage, bring the expenditure in line, try and get the revenue sorted out to fix the immediate needs of uh, meeting the, the, the targets in the program. But the true transformation of Barbados is going to come about in transforming how we do business, how government does business, what we offer for for services to the general public, and how we offer those services to the public and visitors alike. Kaipo has to be transformed, restructured. We know that there, there's a service pro, uh, plan. Um, so that has to be fixed. The Asicura world has had an impact on the implementation of it and the issues surrounding that. The delivery of containers out of the port, those have all had an impact on business in general. There's no doubt that Changes need to be made continuously in that area. We need to move into the 21st century. BRA, we have seen finally an easy pay for land tax, and, and hopefully we will now see more transformation in the BRA. We have a long way to go. I mean, Kaipo is a disappointment still in, in the speed of getting things done. But we have a, a number of things that still need, still need fixing in these agencies. We need to be able to do licenses, you know, Make it simple. We waste so much time on the roads going back and forth. Look at that street down there. You know, every time I look through that, that there and see, say, Wildy Main Road and thing, people just going back and forth to do these things physically and not digitally is a waste of productive, of productive time in Barbados. So we want to see these things transform. But it means educating, training, providing people with the skill sets, and, and, and basically spending the, the you've got to invest in the capital too. For, for technology. And I expect that these will come about certainly in 2020. Because in order to bring about the true change and the efficiency and lower the cost of operations in government, these things have to happen. If I, if I could just add a, a comment um, or two. So I, I think as, as Mr. Clark has said, there, there is a great deal of, of confidence and satisfaction in the work that has gone on in the last year. A lot of very important foundational work has occurred. But there's a, there's a saying um, that you, you can't shrink to greatness. So you, you can't just control expenditure and um, you know, maybe meet your, your monetary and fiscal targets and, and signal victory. What we all want and uh, as Mr. Clark again said, we are seeing the early work going on, but all, what we all need and want is an environment where sustained uh, economic growth can occur. So expenditure, expenditure control is a very important pillar, but it can't be um, the primary driver um, for meeting targets going forward. Ne absolutely necessary, but we have more work to do. During your monitoring, um, have you come across any red flags in terms of the way things are done in terms of government agencies, like any infelicities, things of that nature? Okay. No, uh, I would say, Emmanuel, we, we have not at this time. Uh, we are not auditors, as you know. Uh, but we don't have access to the inner workings, a lot of these things, but from the, the overall high level view, no, we have not. Um, I think what we have, we have tried to ensure that we see more transparency in what is happening. I know our government has really done a lot to improve transparency in that regard. Obviously, there are things that need to improve um, across the country, but I can't sit, sit here and say that we have seen any infelicities, anything so at this stage in Barbados, not, a, not on our level. So. Um, there's still a heavy 
so I would say excessive reliance on, on tax revenue. Um, from where you say, are there any other areas in which we can increase government's revenue without resorting to further taxation? Well, the only way government can get revenue, Sean, is through taxation. I don't know how else, unless it's charge service fees for things, right? Um, really and truly, taxation is revenue for government. And that's why it's important not to continue taxing the same people and the same sources more and more. We need to find other sources to gain revenue from, gain taxes from a, a wider market base, uh, new sectors of the economy, new services sector, and, and drive, drive the revenue from those sites. More tourism, more tourists. Um, you've got to have bigger spend. So bigger spend would drive more revenue for government, whether it's VAT, income tax, corporation tax, employment. You know, we, we need to see bigger spend and more activity. Whether it's through traditional sources, like tourism, which is the low-hanging fruit, I think, um, or through the non-traditional sources. But revenue for, for government is all through taxation. Yes, sir. Um, based on what you just said, um, are there any projections you're aware of, or have you worked out anything in with regards to alternative generation of revenue through uh, Coimen that is to come and uh, the current status of, of Ross University School of Medicine? I, we don't have data on individual projects, how much they're going to add to the economy. Um, the government, I don't have to have that data on, on specific projects. I might have the, on the macro side, but whether, uh, like Coimen, how much that adds to the GDP and on trade and investment. You, it, the trade has to be generated, additional trade, to make, a, make any change to the economy, not, not regurgitating the, the current trade among different people. That's a difference. Um, so we need to see new trade, new activity. Uh, and the, Ross, no doubt, has had a positive impact. I mean, you see it. You see people, you see them spending money, they're spending foreign currency. They're bringing in foreign currency, renting houses, going to the supermarket, Coaches, you see all the coaches at, at LESC when we go down there. So people are gaining from that. There's no doubt about that. Um, I know the government did have a figure, and I, I don't want to misquote it, but I know it was quoted when it was announced that there were coming. How much percentage of GDP they have actually seen in, 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 tra in, in that? I do not have the answer at this stage. But it's an interesting question because there's no doubt that it has had a positive impact on the economy. Um, in St. Kitts and in Nevis, and I list them separately, they, they both have a, a tendency to do something at uh, Christmas time to generate um, the economy to move forward, which is to give the public sector workers an extra payday. If it was somehow feasible for Barbados to do so, would that, would that also add to what you're looking at? <laughs> an extra payday, you mean? Uh, uh, in other words, they have, they, if their salary is, say, $3,000, they'll get 6000 in Ooh, December. A bonus? Yes. I can't help you on that one. <laughs> I, I, think they do I, that, I think you've got to ask the Minister of Finance on that one. To, to, to um, get the economy <laughs> to move forward. I, I think what you might find, they're, they're built into the budget. Uh, so, you know, if those, if those things are budgeted, it's fine. If they're not budgeted, no, it's not fine. Uh, because it, all the targets will be able to sink then. So, I think that government would have to look at that. Um, there's no doubt you want to see stimulation in, in activity and in business activity in, in Christmas time, but that's only the government. I can't answer that question at this stage. I, I, I would I would just make a comment though, to say that um, two levels. One one of course is debt to GDP in St. Kitts and Nevis would be significantly different from the scenario we currently face. So so there may be a right time for something. Um, it might not be the right time for Barbados now. The other important thing, which I, I think we've brought out uh, frequently in our reporting, is that primarily the government's role um, significantly is a facilitative role, and we need to make sure, so you would hear Mr. Clark and others repeatedly talk about ease of doing business, uh, infrastructure, and so on, but the real hope would for the, the growth opportunities to be private sector-led, uh, new investment-led. Mr. Clark, um, just, to, just to stay on the, the climate specifically, I know you want to be able to speak specifically on it, but um, 
as you were saying, we need net new trade, preferably foreign exchange. Um, if, if Coinman only performs a sort of a Walmart role in that it shuts down all the other hardware stores and takes their business, there will be no net gain. So you have a lot of very nervous uh, hardware stores around this country who are saying, what can we do? Because <laughs> this big giant is now going to eat up everything. Um, do you think that um, Coinman might have um, sort of an in-bond setup so that people from the other Eastern Caribbean countries can come here and do their construction uh, purchasing on a wholesale basis, duty free, and have it have them shipped out to their thing? Because otherwise, there's no net gain for Barbados if Coinman only absorbs what's here already or most of what's here. And that's a massive plan. So, Mike, I'm wondering if uh, the Dutch Caribbean, probably funded by Netherlands, is Coinman, to come to the English Caribbean into an OECS market, which is free trade among OECS countries. To me, that would be the only reason for Coinman to spend $40 million with, me the Ma with Massey to build a platform. It doesn't make any sense in the way. But I know you can't come. I'm just saying that that <laughs> I would just admit, Walk, I can't, I can't explain Coinman's strategy. But I would say that you remember when those two wholesale, re we call wholesale retailers up in Warrens and Welch's came in Barbados, everybody panicked. Mm -hmm. and said the supermarkets were closed down. Well, I didn't see any supermarkets closed down. Uh, so I believe that we find a way to make our own businesses more efficient. I believe the other hardware stores that are currently in operation need to look at their own structure and their own efficiency levels and operating costs and so on. But competition is great for the public. You know, it might not be great for those who, who are operating currently. But I, I, I don't think that we need to be afraid of it. I, your idea of whether or not you can have a bonded area and sort of a transshipment area for Barbados, I do not know Coima's supply chain. Um, so that is something that I really can't comment about. Just to follow, I don't want you to think that I am saying that it shouldn't come. No, 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 I clearly no, understand. need to get more. Um, you know, get and make sure they keep their yeah. customers. I'm just saying that at the ma at macro level, if all it does is shift, it's not going to help yeah. your yeah. efforts yeah. to get more investment. It, it, it does. It does mean new money coming into building, building yeah. the facilities and so on, and it does mean employment. Hopefully, we will continue to see employment, more employment. So it does have a positive impact in that. More money coming in for investment side and more employment for the Barbadians but and other, hopefully other offshoot services in the area. There's more money coming in, I understand Massey's building the plan and they're going to lose it, so there's not more money coming in, that's Massey spending what they're going to spend in their own place well, here. Actually, I don't know the details of the project, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't comment on that one. So I would, I would rather not, I don't have the details, I'd rather not give any Damn. inaccurate comments. We've been talking a lot over the years about the uh, doing business. And every time we come to these events, we hear the same thing about doing business. And I'm just wondering, though, how satisfied are you at the pace of which we are really trying to fix this issue of doing business in Barbados? Do you think that we're going to be talking about this next year again at the same stage that we are at the same stage again? I hope we're talking about it next year again, but that we're doing much better. Because I, I know that Minister Cattle, Marsha Cattle, is, um, is the government's representative, has been appointed to deal with this matter. We in the private sector have been asked to nominate persons to out on various subcommittees, and we have done so. So now it's for these subcommittees to get to work. Um, the international business, the banking sector, all of the trade and industry, uh, importation type agencies have all been involved in discussions with the government already and how things can get better. We got to, we got to put our heads together as a country and not, government alone isn't going to do it, but the people involved in the day-to-day -day operations, the employees in the civil service and the people using the services together with the authorities.
got to work together to improve this. It, it has to happen. I mean, there's no reason why we should be where we are in the rankings. And there, as I said, there are some low-hanging fruit that need to be picked, and we need to deal with those. So, Emmanuel, I, I would hate to think that year we come back here talking about we're still at this, this whole load in the rankings, and we still have Kaipo talking about, we still have various agencies talking about. We've we got to do better as a country. If not, we're not going to interact foreign investment. Really and truly, that's, we need the invest, new investment, whether it's foreign or local, to do business better and easier. Don't you think that the lack of transformation in public service is going to be a big challenge and a stumbling block in that aspect in terms of moving forward and doing business more efficiently? Because you have a culture in the public service where you have people who are set in their ways and the pace at which they want to change is like pulling teeth. I, was, I would let Greg, I want to comment on that, but I would let Greg comment on that, because I think he's chomping at a bit here too. Um, you know, I think as a matter of motivating and getting people inspired by the vision of what we can be, and uh, hopefully getting people on board from that point of view. So you're not forcing something on someone, you're uh, motivating them with the vision of what a better Barbados kid looked like. Recently, I was on a uh, um, heard a, a conference call from an uh, investor group, and they were mentioning that uh, in the Indian market, they've managed to improve their ease of doing business ranking. They've moved 60 points, I think 60 positions up in the ease of doing business rankings. Um, and the amount of investor interest, I mean, it's a big market, but still, the amount of investor interest <coughs> simply because of the change yeah, in the trend, ease of yeah. doing business in that uh, country has just been incredible. I mean, if we were to move 60 points back up mm -hmm. in the ranking, we'd probably be where we were 10, 15 years ago, maybe, but it would have a, a, a big difference. Um, yeah, I think the the um, it will be challenging, and it does require getting everyone everyone on board and doing their little part. You know, giving a a full day of efficient uh, service, doing the very best that you can um, in your area of operation, and, and getting everyone inspired to do that uh, is really the only way forward. Yeah, Emmanuel, <coughs> what I would say too is that. Attitude is a lot, right? And, and um, I think everybody has to understand their value in, in the chain, right? Um, but attitude, you've got to be willing to participate and to make a difference in how we do things. If, we, if you're not willing to make a change to improve how you do things, you have a problem. And I think that's, that's, that's really trying to change management. As we said, the biggest challenge in this transformation is changing people's attitude. Spending the technology, money and technology, and not changing people's attitude towards work, towards absenteeism, towards presenteeism, coming to work, eight hours a day and working for, all of those things have to improve in Barbados. But use of technology will help us get a certain way, but attitude and skill set has to improve. We have got to have people that are willing to go that extra mile to do things better for them, for their department, and for their country. But that's attitudinal change. That's why there's a lot of change management issues. A lot of it stems from people from very young, you know, and, and we have to ensure that people understand from very young. That's why I go back and say, when we educate our children, we, we have to ensure that the right attitudes are instilled in, so that when they come out and go to the university and go to work, they come to work with the right attitude that they really want to produce the best. Most people do, but all of them do not, unfortunately. And that's something that we need to change. And I know the, the labor reps, unfortunately, are not here today, but we, we have been discussing it quite a lot. How do we get people to change their attitude towards work and towards a better performance? So. Um, in the era of capital expenditure, the daily experience for most Barbadians is having to contend with deteriorated um, physical infrastructure, roads, etc. And yet there was, a, as you intimated, a, a 
a fifty billion dollar shortfall between what was actually spent, what was budgeted or planned. Were, was the committee given a reason for that shortfall? And any information in terms of any plan to make up that gap? Yeah. We have been given details by various agencies. Um, a lot of the, the warrants have been issued. And I understand from the, the team that we meet with that the Prime Minister and Cabinet have been discussing this because it is a matter of concern for them. I know for the Prime to ensure that the capital expenditure in the budget gets spent, that we actually put it to good use. Not for the sake of spending it, but for <laughs> improving Barbados productivity and economy. So we have been told that they are seriously addressing it. So we look forward to the next report to see if we see some change in that. We, we see various announcements coming about, so we hope that some of this will be spent in the very near future. That's it? Yeah. The one last, just to look like the, according to the Central Bank, the, according to the Central Bank, all of this uh, achievement here is, I don't know percent, but the majority of it is the debt with the restructuring. Is that I, I wouldn't agree with that, Patrick. The debt restructuring itself on the fiscal side, the interest side, but a lot of the other restructuring has come about in controlling expenditure. Um, they had to restructure the tax revenue side, as you know. Uh, so a lot of, of the restructuring has started to, to fix the fiscal side and ensure that the primary targets are met too, but not just, not just uh, on the debt restructuring. Debt restructuring is a big part on the, on the interest savings. There's no doubt about that, on the debt to GDP and so on. But when it comes to the actual primary performance, that doesn't impact that. So when the estimates come out in March, you think you will see a lot less expansion compared to the previous year? I can't answer that one. I don't know what the cabinet ministers are going to bring so forth. I, they have to try and meet the targets. Time. The important thing is to meet the targets they agree with the IMF. As you know, the IMF would review these targets with them every, every time they come to see if anything needs adjusting. Some might go out, some might go down. But the overall targets should still be the same. The reason so, why I was saying that is that it doesn't look as if the government, from, to me, as if the government has not done anything particularly dramatic. I mean, they may have sent home some people here and there, but I haven't seen a, a merger of C, CBC with something or a dismantling of the other thing or, you know, I, like Kaipo you mentioned. Yes, you all you're hearing about is sanitation service trucks and uh, buses. I mean, you, I'm not hearing any structural mergers, acquisitions, cutting, cutting. Nothing. I'm not hearing that. I mean, maybe you all know some like your number, but I'm not hearing anything dramatic that's on a big scale. Patrick, that's what I'm saying. It's some of the transformation has to take place and, and emerges the integration of certain agencies or the outsourcing where necessary of certain agencies or the closure of some. Uh, they, these decisions have to be made. At uh, the social partnership, various bodies presented their cases to the social partnership, which the wide social partnership. And basically, they were given a lot of feedback on what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. So we are anticipating that we see some improvements and some changes in some of these entities. Um, but when it comes to the budgeting side, I don't know where they're going to go next year. All I can say is that they need to meet the targets. There's no doubt that a lot has to be done still. But for people who have been impacted, I don't think it's fair to say that a lot hasn't been done. The financial institutions and Robert here representing the creditors group, a lot has, has had has been done to impact the creditors in Barbados, uh, or Barbados or externally. A lot has been done by people that were laid off and have lost their jobs, their family have lost income. You know, things have happened. We have seen, I think, what you must agree with that government has put control around spending on, on wastage and contract issues and, and so on and so forth. I do agree, sanitation trucks should be here. I, I can't answer that question, why well, it has taken over a year to get trucks in Barbados. That's, that's puzzling to me. Um, we know about the bus issue. These buses have to come on stream. Things like that we must start to see happening. And the de continuing delays in these things, we, we, we need to ensure that these things come about. And government, you know, we are, monitoring committee is not dealing with that aspect of it, but on the social element of it, um, we do agree that people are concerned. I'm sure government has got the feedback from you all in the press 
and the general public as a whole. So our thing is to monitor where they are on the monetary and fiscal side, but to also comment to them and give them feedback on things that can help them achieve their targets better. Sanitation, transportation, improvement on the SOEs, efficiency of the SOEs, all of these must come about. And then increase capital expenditure, and improving the infrastructure of Barbados must happen. Mr. Brown. <laughs> Um, this question relates to revenue collection. Um, I see most here that you have in relation to figures, but in terms of processes, um, that has always been an issue. We ask the digital platforms that come on the screen, you know, uh, what, what's the committee's uh, viewpoint on where we're going at and possibly of losing carousel and coming to something else in the new year. Why were you in? Well, well we, we actually did cover that a little bit. Yeah, earlier. before you came here. Um, certainly, I, I, I can speak in, in Donna Wellington's absence, I could just mention from the from the commercial banking sector, there's a lot of engagement with government departments, MIST, BRA, NIS, etc., having conversations about facilitating digital platforms, digital payments, and so on. So it is, I would say that actually is an area where we are already seeing some transformation and looking for breakthroughs you know so we it's it's something you have to proceed with fairly carefully but i think everyone can see the benefits um mr clark spoke about things like the the, the traffic people have to fight to go and do fairly simple things think about if we can sit in our offices or our homes and conduct a lot of that activity as well and and we are talking payment systems here but it applies to um, the processes as well, renewing drivers' permits and, and other types of licensing and so on. Why do we have to be stuck in a mindset that you have to travel somewhere, line up for an inordinate length of time, mm -hmm. go through a fairly primitive payment process, and then travel back to where you came from? The loss of productivity, the inconvenience, the cost in terms of time is tremendous. So there is good work going on but lots of work to, to do. Now, just a quick follow-up. Uh, I know the, the issue of the U.S. dollar comes more well has the take up been since that announcement of the U.S. dollar. For, sorry, foreign currency. Yeah, I think we've, we've given some feedback on that. I think, I think not unexpectedly, there hasn't been this massive surge. There's been a lot of questions asked. But it's a change, right? It's a fairly significant change from the reality for decades. So I think it's not overly surprising, certainly to us in the, in the banking sector, that people will be cautious. People want to ask questions. They want to understand implications. Um, there's, and, and there's a whole host of things to consider, right? Um, if, I have it under, if I have foreign exchange under my mattress and I put it into the bank, the reality is the, the guidelines say if you're traveling, you need to use the money you have in your account before you access money from the, the system. Um, people might want to think about that. I, 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 I'm not going to pass judgment on whether that's good or bad, but if I have it under my mattress and I could come to the bank and buy money from the bank and still have my money under the mattress, if I put it into the bank and I have to spend it, then I don't have it anymore. So people might think that way. But, but you know, we, we, we mentioned earlier on about long term, what's good for the country? Because confidence that foreign exchange will be available. If I use it, I can get more, etc. Confidence drives um, so much. We, we all talk about the fact you can have all your ducks lined up and people have no confidence in a process. No one participates. If there's confidence, there can be a lot of facilitation and so on. So long answer to your question. We haven't seen a surge, but there's interest. And we have seen, we've, we've seen accounts being opened and so on. But I, I think understandably people are cautious. Sophisticated clients, less cautious. Companies who may understand how it will work, sure. I, I would just like to wrap up if you all don't mind. Um, I want to I thank all of you all for coming. You know, and to, to say, if we remember where we were a year ago, a lot has been done to fix a lot of problems in Barbados. And, and we have to give the government credit for that. 
but we have a long way to go and a lot needs to be done for the long-term future of Barbados. That's where the true transformation of this country is, is necessary. Uh, the way we do business, public sector, private sector. And what our role is as Barbadians as a whole, um, what our contribution must be to, to ensure that we meet the, the targets as a country. It is not going to be simple and easy. Nothing, any country that has to get out of the hole that we were in a year ago is going to have a difficult time. I believe that once this investment comes in, as you've heard the IMF say, have you heard the central bank governor say, once this investment gets flowing, Barbados is going to see greener days. And we look forward to that. We look forward to the projects coming on stream, the focus and attention to ensure that everything possible is done to ensure that this investment is put to good use and these projects get started. We look forward to a good tourist season, good source of foreign exchange coming in, good employment in this sector. So, have a long way to go still, but we, I, I believe we are on the right track and we need to ensure that we stay focused and continue doing what's necessary for the long, long term good of Barbados. So, thank you all and look forward to your continued support. Thank you. Thank you. Dependents, you notice that we got on our, our, our colors, my, our national colors. I uh, want to wish Barbados a happy independence uh, next weekend, next week. So, and all of you enjoy your independence celebrations and do it safely. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.